introduction uh, over the past uh, two years i have been really uh, fascinated uh, by the rapid advancement uh, in ai and uh, some time ago i was um, uh, really interested uh, in how this, this development intersects uh, with the world of uh, .NET technologies. And uh, today I want to share with you some of uh, the exciting ways uh, we can build uh, our own uh, REC uh, agents uh, using .NET technologies. Uh, so let's uh, dive into uh, build your own uh, REC agent and explore uh, what's happening at the crossroads of uh, AI and uh, .NET. Uh, let's walk through today's uh, agenda. Uh, we will explore a bit uh, what is uh, REC uh, to understand how it enhances uh, AI capabilities. Uh, then I will uh, present you the uh, tech stack uh, that I used. Uh, also, we will have a practical part uh, with the implementation. And uh, I will share you a bit of uh, uh, challenges and uh, solution uh, I faced uh, during developments um, and uh, how I overcome them. And uh, maybe some of uh, that insight uh, might be uh, helpful uh, for you in similar projects. And um, as the next uh, step, I will share, uh, share for you uh, potential improvements of uh, this uh, idea. And um, also you might notice uh, this uh, label uh, not uh, by AI, uh, which means uh, that uh, this presentation uh, was prepared uh, by me, uh, not uh, by AI. Okay, um, uh, now let's talk about uh, our uh, focus areas. Uh, during the development, uh, we will concentrate uh, on several key objectives. Uh, it's uh, cloud-ready uh, proof of concept, uh, efficient uh, data retrieval and uh, memory management, uh, responses based on custom knowledge base and uh, local LLM. Okay, and uh, now there is a question. Uh, what is REC? Uh, REC is a retrieval augmented generation. And uh, to explain this, I have uh, a diagram uh, that represents how um, REC uh, works uh, in a simple way. Uh, so it starts from a um, uh, user question. Uh, and to answer uh, the question, the system uh, lookups to uh, relevant information uh, from uh, our knowledge base, uh, which could be a collection of uh, documents like PDF file, Excel files, or uh, Word uh, documents, uh, any other data or stored facts. Um, uh, then we are taking our uh, the found uh, relevant information, and uh, this uh, like relevant information we are passing to our uh, LLM uh, with the original user question. Uh, so LLM will generate uh, the answer based on the uh, provided uh, knowledge, uh, found provided knowledge and uh, original user question. Uh, so uh, as output, we will have some augmented uh, generated answer. Uh, yes, uh, you stayed under budget uh, by $15 uh, last month. Uh, good job. So it's uh, basically it. Uh, now let's talk about uh, what we are going to use today. Uh, so the first thing is uh, .NET Aspire. It's a cloud ready stack for building observable uh, production ready distributed applications. Uh, the next one is uh, semantic kernel, uh, which we will use in pair with kernel memory. And uh, also Alama uh, for running uh, locally uh, large language models. Uh, so uh, now let's see uh, how it looks together. Uh, I have prepared uh, a diagram uh, that illustrates uh, the architecture of uh, our .NET Aspire solution uh, that uses uh, RAC services to handle uh, AI-based uh, tasks uh, with several components uh, working together. Uh, you can also see there is uh, two containers with um, 
LLMs, uh, there is a PHI model, and uh, which handles uh, answering user questions, and uh, another uh, container with uh, embedding model. Uh, this uh, for embedding text into vector representation, uh, making it uh, easier uh, for the system uh, to find um, similar or uh, relevant uh, pieces of knowledge in our uh, knowledge base. And for uh, our knowledge base uh, and uh, kernel uh, memory kernel, uh, we are going to use uh, PostgreSQL as uh, uh, kernel memory storage. Uh, now let's talk about .NET Aspire. Um, it provides a um, feature for running and connecting a multi-project application and uh, their dependencies. Uh, also, it has uh, easy integration uh, through the NuGet packages uh, for commonly uh, used services uh, like uh, Redis or Postgres uh, with standardized uh, interfacing, ensuring uh, they connected consistently and seamlessly with uh, our application. And uh, as uh, always, uh, Microsoft uh, provides us uh, some templates, uh, templates and uh, tooling uh, for Visual Studio and uh, .NET uh, CLI, uh, which uh, help you create uh, and interact with uh, .NET Aspire apps. Uh, now let's talk about uh, Semantic Kernel. Mm, Semantic Kernel, uh, it's a really cool uh, open source uh, development kit uh, that lets you easily build uh, your own uh, AI agents and integrate um, uh, the latest uh, AI models uh, into your um, uh, application, uh, whether it's uh, C Sharp, Python, or Java code bases. And uh, the cool thing is that uh, you're uh, really mm, able to easily switch uh, the AI model uh, like uh, for a new one or just a different some open source model uh, that uh, works basically like an orchestration layer between uh, AI models and uh, your application. Uh, it has uh, like uh, a lot of powerful feature uh, that enable you to integrate uh, your application um, and existing service with uh, AI uh, to utilize uh, the power of um, uh, language models. Uh, it also provides um, some uh, some feature like plugins, hooks, and filters, uh, which I'm not going to cover. Uh, a lot today, uh, but I will uh, talk a bit uh, in the end of our session, uh, like in next possible steps uh, for improvements of such uh, kind of applications. Uh, now let's talk about kernel memory. Um, kernel memory, uh, it's a multimodal AI service uh, specialized uh, in the efficient indexing of uh, data sets uh, through the custom continuous data hybrid pipelines uh, with uh, support uh, for uh, REC. Uh, it's designed for uh, seamless integration uh, as a plugin with uh, semantic uh, kernel. And um, kernel memory uh, is a service uh, built on the feedback uh, and uh, lessons learned uh, from developing uh, kernel uh, kernel memory uh, from developing semantic kernel and semantic memory. Uh, it provides uh, uh, several features uh, that would uh, otherwise uh, have to be developed manually. Uh, it's uh, such as uh, storing files, uh, extracting text from files, uh, providing a framework to uh, secure users' data, etc. Uh, so, um, kernel memory uh, architecture uh, can be divided uh, into uh, two main uh, areas. Uh, it's uh, ingestion and uh, retrieval. Uh, so, uh, now let's talk about the ingestion. Uh, it uh, uh, simply looks uh, uh, as follows. Uh, so, we have uh, four main steps. Uh, so firstly, uh, what we need to do is uh, extract uh, extract uh, the text. Uh, it's quite simple. We just uh, extract the text from our uh, PDF documents, the Kix documents, uh, web page, uh, 
It uh, also supports uh, presentation, emails, uh, different kind of files. Uh, so next step, we are splitting this text into portion, uh, portions uh, or small chunks uh, for generating embedding uh, vectors for each uh, portion. Uh, and uh, as a last, as last step, uh, we just uh, need to store embedding vectors and uh, metadata in our uh, memory DB. Uh, so um, also uh, kernel in memory uh, uses two types of storage. Uh, there is a content storage and memory storage. Uh, Talking about content storage, it stores uh, raw data uploaded by clients, uh, pipeline status, unique ID assigned uh, to documents. So basically it's uh, like PDF, Excel files, etc. And uh, when a client sends a file uh, to the service, uh, first it saves uh, data uh, in the content storage. It can be uh, like uh, Azure blobs or uh, local disk. Uh, and uh, during this uh, phase, uh, it was to mention that uh, client stays connected, uh, sending uh, data and uh, waiting for uh, the data to be stored. And uh, only when uh, this operation is completed, uh, kernel memory releases um, the client request and uh, starts an asynchronous uh, pipeline uh, like from, from the previous slide uh, to complete uh, the ingestion uh, without blocking uh, the client. Uh, and uh, memory storage, it's just a simple database uh, with search capability where kernel memory stores, uh, stores uh, persons and uh, metadata. It's uh, like vector embedding uh, itself. Uh, kernel memory is uh, composable in two ways. Uh, and uh, first is uh, customizable components. So you can easily choose uh, a vector database, content storage, uh, embedding generator, and summarizer. And uh, the second one is uh, extensible pipeline. Uh, the cool thing is that you can uh, easily uh, modify uh, pipeline from previous slide by adding your uh, custom handlers uh, to the pipeline or uh, replacing the default ones. Uh, now let's talk about uh, Olama. Mm, Olama is um, an open source uh, tool for running uh, uh, and managing uh, large language models uh, locally. And uh, there is a few key points uh, which I uh, want to mention. The first is local execution. Uh, we are running uh, LLMs on our own hardware uh, for enhanced uh, privacy. Uh, the second one is uh, easy integration. Uh, uh, Olama provides uh, an API for communication with models, uh, which uh, uh, really uh, convenient. Uh, the next one is model management. Uh, we can uh, easily download uh, other models or update the existing one or switch between our uh, different uh, local models, uh, which also a really a great uh, feature. Um, the next one is uh, privacy. And uh, as uh, it was already mentioned, uh, we are running it locally. Uh, so uh, when working with sensitive information, uh, there is no need to rely on um, external servers. Uh, the next one is performance. Uh, it reduces uh, latency by eliminating uh, network calls to external services. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there is a huge maybe but. Uh, you need to uh, understand uh, that uh, your server's uh, hardware, uh, it's another uh, important factor. Uh, because uh, you just need to ensure uh, you have powerful GPU uh, to maintain uh, performance, mm, to maintain performance on a good level. Uh, of course, uh, you can use uh, also uh, kernel memory with um, like, uh, OpenAI uh, API or Azure OpenAI, uh, but the idea of um, Today's uh, meeting is uh, to do it locally uh, without relying on uh, external 
services. And uh, the last one is control. It offers full control over the AI models and uh, their deployment environment. Uh, okay, and uh, now uh, let's uh, build it and uh, let me open uh, my Visual Studio. So uh, I would like to uh, start from the, our uh, orchestration uh, project, uh, um, EpiHost. Uh, so, uh, as a first step, uh, we are going to uh, set up our .NET Aspire um, orchestration uh, project. Uh, the first uh, step is just to um, add our uh, Postgres um, SQL uh, to use it uh, both like uh, vector and uh, content uh, database. Uh, we uh, are using this uh, with init uh, bint uh, mount uh, to uh, create a database uh, using these resources. Here we have a script. Uh, uh, this script, um, this script is opening. Okay, um, this script uh, doing just a simple sync. It uh, creates the database and adds. Um, the necessary vector extension uh, to store our embeddings. Uh, so uh, the next step is uh, adding uh, a llama. Mm, there is uh, there are different ways uh, to uh, to do this, uh, but for the purpose of uh, this small demo, uh, and uh, I have chosen uh, the easiest way. I just um, uh, Find out some uh, NuGet package, uh, which uh, was developed to make uh, the Olama integration uh, with Aspire easier. Uh, but uh, it's not uh, like the best option, uh, as it doesn't uh, provide as much flexibility as we might want. Uh, but it's still uh, sufficient uh, for our demo purpose. And uh, the last step, we just uh, add in our um, service uh, and um, we are passing some uh, references to our models. And uh, you might also see that there is uh, awaiters uh, which uh, we are adding uh, to be sure that um, our models and uh, DB are started uh, successfully before uh, running our REC uh, agent. Uh, so uh, now let's uh, take a look at our uh, service um, itself. Um, I have structured everything uh, by the regions uh, just for better visibility. Uh, so let's start from the first one, um, configure services. Um, Okay, uh, there is nothing special uh, here except this add service defaults, um, which maybe I would like to skip uh, for now. Uh, we will uh, get back to it later. Here we have some constants with our uh, models. Um, here we are adding uh, open telemetry and health check for our, for our uh, PostgreSQL uh, database. And here we are retrieving our LLM uh, configurations, uh, which uh, we were passing here. So uh, now we uh, need to configure a semantic kernel and uh, allow match at completion. It's quite simple. We just add in a kernel and uh, then add in allow match at completion uh, by passing our uh, text uh, generation model and uh, and point uh, to our uh, text uh, generative um, llama uh, model uh, next step uh, we are going to um, talk about uh, llama uh, text uh, generation configuration and embedding embedding llama configs um, this uh, two configs we are going to use for configuring a uh, kernel memory uh, so um, Firstly, uh, we are registering our uh, memory database uh, is uh, our um, Postgres uh, SQL. And uh, then we are adding Olama text generation. Uh, 
by passing a text llama config uh, where uh, we are using uh, endpoint uh, for um, for this uh, container uh, for text generation and uh, here uh, we also using another one uh, for uh, embedding model uh, we are also setting uh, context size uh, for each of them uh, and uh, for embedding model, uh, uh, it's advisable to uh, have um, smaller chunks with uh, smaller context size. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we are configured our uh, kernel uh, memory uh, by passing uh, the um, and configuring uh, text generation uh, service and uh, text embedding. Uh, this next step we have uh, configure endpoints. Mm. Uh, here uh, mm, there is a great sync uh, which uh, kernel memory provides uh, just out of the box. Uh, it provides uh, uh, and like um, package of uh, cool endpoints. I will show it uh, later in Swagger. Um, here we also define our custom endpoints. Uh, is just uh, for uh, generating uh, an answer uh, by um, straight uh, request to LLM without any augmented uh, generation. And uh, here we're just configuring Swagin and running the application. So I um, guess let's uh, oh, let's take a look uh, how it uh, looks like. Okay. You can see we are starting our uh, project. So okay. Okay, let me show you what uh, we have. Uh, okay, uh, here uh, we can see, uh, okay, let's start maybe from uh, Aspire um, dashboard. Uh, here we can see the list of our services. Uh, so there is uh, uh, our um, PostgreSQL, our uh, Alama models containers, uh, our service with Swagger. Mm. Uh, you can see that uh, there is this uh, huge uh, list of endpoints provided uh, just out of the box, uh, as I mentioned before, by uh, kernel memory. Uh, there is an endpoints for uploading the documents, uh, for getting indexes, uh, for deleting and uh, for deleting indexes and deleting documents. Uh, endpoint for asking a question. Um, it uh, basically uh, allow us to ask uh, a question and uh, get the answer based on the uh, our custom knowledge base here we also have a searching point uh, which uh, uh, only do uh, uh, like search uh, um, on embedding vectors uh, so we can use it for searching relevant information without uh, using llm for augmented uh, generation and also, we can see that there is a upload status. It's about uh, uploading a file, and uh, we can download uh, the document uh, from our database. Uh, okay, now let's maybe start from this small endpoint and ask uh, some simple question. Let's just uh, say uh, hi. It's uh, a generation, as I mentioned previously, uh, could take some uh, time. Uh, as I'm not uh, uh, using GPU uh, for uh, this purpose, as my laptop uh, just uh, don't have it. So we are going to maybe struggle a bit today with uh, some waiting, but uh, we can see that we have a model uh, which uh, we were using uh, because we can have uh, different uh, models and uh, can use it uh, like uh, for each request, different model. 
uh, okay, we can see hello, how can I help you today? And uh, also let's uh, ask some, mm, some uh, more interesting question. What is the net aspire? Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this generation will take a bit uh, more time. So uh, let's maybe uh, uh, now open our uh, dashboard. Uh, and I want to show you traces tab. Uh, here we can see um, uh, the traces, for example, uh, how uh, our request were, uh, was uh, processed. Uh, Okay, and uh, now let's uh, uh, go back to our code, uh, to our method which I skipped. Uh, okay, add service defaults. Um, okay, uh, uh, there is a project, service defaults. Uh, it's um, Dot .NET Aspire uh, common, uh, it's at uh, common dot .NET Aspire services uh, like service discovery, resilience, health check, and open telemetry. And you can see that this project should be referenced by each service project in your solution. Uh, so um, Aspire uh, comes uh, with open telemetry and um, open telemetry support, and uh, it's uh, highly recommended, uh, recommended uh, adding observability uh, to your uh, REC solution uh, from the beginning uh, because uh, you really want to know um, uh, how everything works uh, together and uh, how uh, uh, how long it takes to serve a response. Uh, so we can see uh, that I have uh, added a tracing, uh, I have added a semantic kernel and adding a traces for semantic kernel and kernel memory. Uh, that basically it, uh, what uh, what I have updated in this uh, template uh, project uh, from uh, .NET Aspire and um, simply uh, added service defaults here in Builder. Uh, okay, let's go back to our, uh, our uh, hand fire and uh, check what we uh, have. So we can see there is uh, an answer. Mm. We can see that uh, doesn't correspond to a specific well-known term in the technology industry. Uh, I can explain that next reference. Okay, uh, we can see that uh, this answer uh, seems to be um, irrelevant uh, as and i would even say that uh, it's completely incorrect as uh, this model just uh, don't know uh don't know about um net aspire uh so uh let's uh let's just uh, use this upload um endpoint to uh mm, to generate uh, our uh, embeddings. Okay, we have prepared uh, the .NET Aspire documentation. Okay, let's send a request. Uh, this documentation I have truncated just uh, to the first uh, 100 pages uh, in order uh, not to take uh, a lot of time uh, during the demo. Uh, also, we can uh, check our resources and in traces, we might see uh, how our um, generation uh, works, uh, generation of embedding vectors. Uh, so we can see that uh, uh, we uploaded our uh, document and uh, using this uh, uh, gnomic embedding uh, model, we are processing our file uh, by uh, splitting two small chunks, and then we are passing this uh, text chunk uh, as it was mentioned uh, on our slide uh, with uh, pipeline. Uh, we are passing these uh, chunks to uh, LLM, uh, which uh, generates uh, vector embeddings. 
uh, and uh, as the next step, it will be uh, stored uh, stored uh, in our um, vector uh, database. Uh, so let's uh, wait a bit. It's not uh, going too much time uh, because uh, the document is not uh, really huge, only 100 pages. And you might also notice that uh, there is like uh, some um, like uh, some requests uh, are taking uh, less time, some requests are taking uh, more time. It's uh, due to the different sizes of chunks uh, as um, uh, kernel memory trying to split uh, the text on some um, on chunks uh, by some at least uh, logic uh, endings, uh, not to cut. Uh, the, uh, the sentence uh, in the middle of, uh, not to cut sentence in the middle of just a word. Uh, uh, okay, now we can see that uh, it uh, was successfully processed and uh, we can see uh, another request. Uh, it's uh, saving and inserting our uh, vector embeddings to our Postgres uh, DB. Uh, so uh, now I want to uh, back to our swagger and uh, let's uh, ask the same question uh, by using uh, this uh, endpoint from uh, kernel memory. Okay, let's clear this field as we uh, don't uh, need it. Uh, okay, and ask a question. What is the .NET uh, Aspire? Mm, one more time, but uh, with um, uh, like uh, augmented uh, generation. I'm pretty sure that it's going to take more time as it will uh, first uh, uh, search uh, information, relevant information in our DB, and then it will uh, pass uh, this context to our LLM. So uh, basically it will uh, take uh, more time to LLM to answer. Uh, so while it's uh, uh, syncing, let's uh, take a look at this endpoint, uh, search. Um, we can use uh, this endpoint for searching information. Uh, so uh, there is the filters, uh, which uh, we are not going uh, to apply as I uploaded the document without any filters. Also, there is an index uh, which can be used uh, for uh, tagging uh, documents uh, to some categories or etc. Uh, and uh, some additional arguments or limitations. Mm -hmm. So now let's just uh, uh, make a query uh, about um, that uh, net spire. Okay, and uh, we can see uh, what uh, that uh, we have a response uh, with uh, founded results. Um, this endpoint provides us uh, a result of a vector search. So we can see uh, that uh, there is an um, array of results. Uh, we can see a partions. So here is the text uh, which uh, is relevant to our question. We can see also relevance. Uh, it's uh, a value from zero to one, uh, higher value, it's higher relevance. Mm. So we can also see uh, document ID, uh, some other fields, and uh, the cool thing uh, that we also have a source name and we have a link. And uh, it means that uh, we can um, also uh, use uh, use it uh, for downloading and it also provides source URLs that, uh, so we can uh, while building some our custom uh, solutions uh, for um, uh, retrieval uh, augmented generation uh, services we are also uh, will be able to uh, let user uh, to download uh, relevant uh, information uh download file original uh maybe to get some uh to get acquainted with uh it so let's go back i hope that oh it's still uh processing okay let's wait but also um 
talking about these parameters. Uh, there is another thing, uh, relevance, as you can see, uh, there is a lot of different uh, portions. Really quite a lot, let's scroll. And you can see there is a different relevance uh, level. So um, uh, it means that uh, we can uh, configure uh, our request uh, by uh, passing a relevance. Uh, we can also do it even, uh, even now. Just gonna copy this and reset. So how it works. Um, let me use this. Okay. We can set a uh, minimum uh, relevance. Let's set it to, for example, uh, zero point seven. Will will let me check whether we will have a uh, response for it. Yeah, we'll probably get something. Uh, okay, let's execute and. Uh, now we can see that uh, now we get only our top uh, relevant uh, knowledge, relevant knowledge uh, based on our uh, relevance parameter. So uh, we can also use this uh, parameter in our uh, querying, which is still under the process. Uh, let's check in and how uh, how long it's already running because it's really too long. Uh, Okay, it's already four minutes. Oh, I yeah, finally see the result. Okay, let's check uh, what we have on the Inspire piece to be concept related to file development, uh, application con uh, from network communication points. Okay, uh, providing various aspects. Uh, okay, it's a framework. Uh, uh, okay, uh, we can see that. Um, uh, our answer uh, now um, it's a bit different from the original one because uh, firstly it's uh, more wide uh, it's based on the context so uh, what does it mean it means that LLM used uh, this text uh, it used uh, this text and this this it used all of this uh, context to build uh, answer for us. And uh, we can see that we took really a lot of uh, data for generating an answer. So uh, it's the reason why we were uh, was waiting a lot. Uh, but um, for, uh, like for the better, uh, for the better answer, uh, it's suggested to, uh, we can see that I have passed only question, uh, but if I click reset, we can see that we also have this have this uh, mean relevance uh, property, uh, which uh, we have used here. Uh, so uh, for the better generation, uh, we can uh, pass this uh, relevance um, parameter uh, to generate uh, the answer based only on uh, the most relevant uh, pieces of knowledge. So it will produce uh, the better uh, answer uh, to the user. Okay, uh, I guess uh, now we can um, back uh, to our presentation and uh, move into the next slide. I want to share with you some um, challenges and solutions uh, which uh, I faced uh, with uh, uh, like during the development. So the first one is um, uh, the first one is uh, semantic uh, kernel is currently uh, in the active development phase. So it might be uh, useful to utilize nightly build uh, NuGet packages to instantly access uh, the latest feature. And uh, uh, I'm talking about this because I also had an experience with uh, connecting this Olama and uh, this pieces of code uh, wasn't uh, released at the date of uh, doing this uh, project. So um, 
I uh, was uh, required to use this nightly builds, but uh, now it uh, released, so um, you will be able to use it. Um, okay, and uh, the next one, uh, really important, uh, including with container runtime arguments, uh, GPUs all uh, when running Olama enables um, GPU acceleration, uh, and it's significantly, really significantly, uh, 10 times significantly <laughs> boosting the performance uh, of uh, large language model uh, computations compared to using only the CPU. Uh, so uh, you just need to remember that uh, if you're going uh, to use it even uh, only for your like own uh, purpose, like for uh, local use, just for yourself, uh, it would better to have uh, at least some GPU and uh, use this uh, parameter as well. Okay, <clears throat> uh, next steps. Uh, here I would like uh, to share a bit uh, about uh, plugins, uh, which uh, Semantic uh, Kernel provides. Uh, plugins uh, allow you to extend the capabilities of uh, AI system uh, by integrating your own custom functions and uh, APIs. Uh, so basically, semantic kernel uh, uses um, function calling to enable uh, AI to invoke the function uh, defined in your plugins. Uh, this uh, plugins can contain a set of uh, function or uh, some API calls uh, and perform various tasks. Uh, so to achieve this, uh, you just need to ensure that AI understands uh, and property properly utilize uh, them. So plugin must uh, provide uh, semantic uh, description of uh, their uh, functions. And um, the next uh, thing that I would like to mention, it's about kernel memory. Uh, kernel memory allow, uh, allows to organize uh, memories uh, with two main approaches. Uh, which can also be used together for uh, maximum flexibility. Uh, so the first one is storing information in separate collection uh, calls, uh, called indexes and uh, labeling information with custom um, keywords uh, called uh, text. Uh, text uh, texts are uh, customizable and can be used for uh, security filtering so you can set uh, set up a security, restrict some uh, files. Uh, you can add uh, multiple tags uh, for um, uh, for each document, uh, and uh, each with uh, different values. Uh, for example, you can uh, use a user ID or user email uh, to restrict uh, restrict access um, to specific user. Uh, or you can use uh, some uh, something like a group ID uh, uh, for uh, group-based uh, restrictions. Uh, tags uh, like, uh, for example, uh, project ID uh, or year, uh, months, etc., uh, might help you organize uh, records uh, by uh, by the project uh, or uh, time. So it also. Uh, might be uh, helpful uh, during generation this uh, uh, answers uh, based on uh, by narrowing this uh, uh, search uh, for some specific project or specific documentation or groups etc. Uh, so and uh, this uh, basically uh, it for today and thank you all for your uh, time and uh, attention today. I hope that uh, you found this uh, presentation uh, insightful and uh, useful. And uh, the presentation and uh, GitHub repository, this uh, ex example, um, will be sent uh, in a follow-up email. And that's it. Thank you.